so we're yeah we're gearing up for that 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 game against Albany. Yeah. Now, um, now Matt, you called the game yesterday for um, hockey for the hockey. Yeah, final regular season game uh, for the uh, Seals, and nice way to end the regular season because they are, of course, uh, ready to set up for now. Uh, we don't know what the status is going to be. I believe for the CHL playoffs. Because... I believe it is. It is NYU that clinched with the Drexel loss. So okay. it looks like it's going to be NYU Stony Brook to start off. Yeah, so Stony Brook did clinch the top seed with the win, mm-hmm. and. The, and Drexel, you know, they stun Stony Brook, I think, because they're really you – know, because they're a team that you know, basically on the precipice of the playoffs in or out, and they split a home-and-home home back in November. And so you had to uh, you know, look at Drexel with a little bit of uh, concern, but you know, after one period, that concern was long gone because the Seawolves were really five to nothing, and everything was clicking. And, yeah, yeah. And we were talking about was, the we talked about the scoring for the Mesocross team, right? That it, eight different goal scorers. This hockey club had nine different goal scorers yes. and sixteen different point getters. <laughs> yeah, and that's the other thing because I thought that at least a couple guys had more than one, but the scoring because we don't get the official scoring in game. They, they may have got uh, there may have been tip ins uh, that uh, people other people got credit for, but the the great thing about it is that. Uh, the, actually, there was one one uh, goal that we weren't sure counted because that was at the end where it was yes, ten to one. Uh, ten to one is the final, yes, but it was nine it to counted. one still on the scoreboard. So right. I said, you know, at the end of the game, I, I, I closed the broadcast. It's uh, Seawolves ten, I think, to one. Yep, <laughs> yeah. yep. Uh, because it did count because I saw it go in before the the clock went to zero. Because yeah. it, because the clock was directly above it, and, and even though it's blocked by a light fixture, you can still see it go to zero. I right. thought it counted, but they never changed the score. Yeah, so. and, and just mad, just you covering them. You know, you we, we know it's going to be the Sea Wolves. It's going to be Rhode Island, uh, Delaware as well, and yep. uh, potentially NYU. So, what are you seeing for this hockey squad when they start postseason on the 18th and 19th? Because well, they got a tremendous depth. There is. They have no problem being somebody a first game, and with single elimination, this should be a relative romp for them. It's oh, their their problem has always been you know getting a sweep because they'll stop on their opponent in the first game, and you know they you know, they lose their legs a little bit in the second. But I don't think that's going to be a problem for them in this case. I think they'll have no problem handling uh, the uh, this this division. Uh, the only problem is, is that they've got a long layoff until the Nationals. They start on March 10th. So they'll go through this weekend, decide who's going to represent, and then they move on. But they're going to have to uh, you know, spend a lot of time warming up. Unfortunately, neither uh, the Nationals or the division tournament is going to be uh, local because one takes place in Pennsylvania and the other one takes place in Missouri, mm-hmm. near St. Louis. Right. But yeah, this upcoming postseason tournament is going to be big because the winner of the ESCHL tournament gets the auto bid to the ACHA right. tournament, right? The national tournament, and the Seawolves have gotten there before, and you know ran out of steam. But I think this is one of their more talented teams because the other thing they've got is that they can beat you in any way they want to or any way you force them to. Uh, they do have size on defense. They do knock people around. They have a great goalie, Matt Bekazikov. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've been fun to watch this season, and it's been a pleasure able to get those games on WSB Broadcasting. And I'll tell you something, when uh, Jake actually, Jake was there, but Jake had to do a journalism assignment, assignment, so he wasn't available to call the game, because I was saying, what are you, you staying right next to me, you should be on, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but it was, a, it was a, Jake, I'll tell you something, he's going to be going places, because he has it nailed down. Uh, he, he does a very good job calling a hockey game. And maybe we can get him on some uh, women's lacrosse as well and mm-hmm. you know, maybe some baseball, see yeah. what he's available for. But and the great thing about it is that you know those games were a pleasure to do because he, I loved having somebody who was so on top of his game. Right, and he's he's going to be on assignment through uh, the ESCHL full season where Stony Brook are four-time champs through 2013 through 2016, looking to get their first – uh, conference title since then. Well, if he's traveling with the team, I'm just going to hand the equipment. We'll get the games on. <laughs> may know? as well. May, may as well try. May as yeah. well try. Right. 
Yeah, we'll see. But a lot of fun action ahead for the hockey squad. A lot of fun action here, too, on WSB. But I'll tell you something else. I made a point of this on the broadcast last night, is that they are the only ones, they are the only program, and of course not sponsored by the athletic department, that will have playoffs. Yeah, that's true. They're, they're the only ones that are going to have a postseason. <laughs> this is the one time being independent benefit of that. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> now, again, I'll, I'll say it to the If you listen to the broadcast, I've been saying it over and over again, but I'll say it yet here too is that uh, club, when you say club, you immediately think that it's like the rugby club where you, know, you gather up on the side field over by South P and. You know, you have a pickup game or something like that. No, this is not like that. It's kind of, if you, the closest parallel I can think of is NCAA versus NAIA. And ACHA is kind of like the NAIA of hockey. Yeah. Yeah, that's, no, probably, that's probably a pretty good analogy for that one. You know, in, in, in lacrosse, they call it the um, MCLA. You know, National be Club Lacrosse Association. Well, yeah. uh, our mm-hmm. own Ben Batanti, who is a Stony Brook alum himself, he didn't play on the uh, lacrosse team, but he uh, did play uh, high school. Uh, he did some games with me back in the day, you know, like 10 years ago. And uh, he went out to California because uh, he works in the entertainment industry, and he ended up helping UCLA start its club program. I believe you, that's growing into an NCAA program. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if lacrosse makes the move out there. I mean, in both Colorado and California, um, somebody had told me a stat for the first time in you know lacrosse history. There were more sticks bought in California than on Long Island. California's um, a much bigger state. They have twice yeah, the population. No, I, yeah. I, yeah, but 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 you're seeing growth in California sports. Yeah, the, and I did have a friend that actually coached out there as well too. But he said, you know, it, it's still very much a secondary action like other sports have to be finished with their day before they get to participate you know almost like football right in texas you know you want to play baseball you gotta wait until spring football is over well yeah and, and colorado became a, a pocket of lacrosse activity that you know with denver winning a national championship uh, i remember was i remember when we beat denver <laughs> back in 2010 yeah. the ncaa that, that, that i believe is, yeah that is our only ncaa tournament win uh but you know the the. But on the other hand, we haven't been in the NCA since 2012. So what can I tell you? And the chances of us getting into it, we would have to run the table in order to be considered for an at-large. Uh, the automatic qualifier has been taken away from us again, barring a court injunction. But again, you know, no one's talking about that because even if there was a chance of getting one, they can't. Uh, so we, it's not something that anybody's hoping for. <laughs> 